Armando here and in this video I'm going to show you our exact process for registering and verifying these phone numbers inside of high level for the A2P 10 DLC registration. Uh, we've used this process across hundreds of accounts at this point and we've had a 100% success rate uh, doing this method. Uh, typically we're using 800 numbers so I'm going to walk you through this process. This is a brand new uh, account, a sub account that I've set up. We just brought in a client to be able to run Facebook ads for them and one of the key components is to have a phone number that works so that our automations kick in, our follow up kicks in and they can maximize their leads and be able to close more of those deals. The very first thing is actually purchasing a phone number. You can do that by going to settings and then hovering over the phone number section inside of the sub account. From here, what you'll do is click on add number and um, choose that option in here. Uh, typically, I like to use 800 numbers because number one, they get registered and verified usually within 24 to 72 hours, allowing us to come out of the gate swinging. And then later on, we add local phone numbers if they're needed. So my process is pretty straightforward here. I click on filter and I unselect local numbers and I click apply and I just pick a toll free number that's available. I like to stick to the 833s, the 844s uh, if they're available. Once that phone number is purchased, you're going to have an option to verify uh, the phone number. But before you do this, there are a few things that need to be prepped uh, in order for you to have success. So one of the things that we do is we create an appointment request form that is independent from the client's website. This allows us to control the logo, it allows us to control the URL, and it allows us to be able to take a screenshot and submit it with the requirements that the regulators need. So this is a template that we use and we upload into pretty much every sub account. You guys can take a look at it and just replicate it here. Basically what we're doing here is creating a single web page and we're clicking on the logo and we're adding the actual logo of our clients. The one that's on their website, we're adding it here to this page. The next thing is that um, this form that we build inside of High Level already has the verbiage exactly how we need it right here in order for um, the regulators to look at it and be able to approve this. So once we have this template loaded, the only thing, like I said, that we do is change this logo. You click on the logo um, and click on images and then you can upload a new image with your client's logo on here. Once you've added your logo to this page here, the next thing is going to be to actually connect a domain to it so that you have a working page that people can go to. You do that by clicking on settings and coming to the domain section and then clicking on this section that says add a domain to the funnel. As you can see, I don't have any domains and so I'm going to click on add domain and plug in my domain in here. Now here's a tip for you guys. What I do because we manage dozens and dozens of accounts, um, it can get costly to register a single domain for each client. So what I do is I register one overarching domain and I label it something like, you know, my agency lead pages or my agency leads or something like that. And I use that as the root domain and then I assign a subdomain to every single one of my clients. So let's say that this client's name was ABC Junk. I would put ABC Junk dot and then my domain Com. And I would do this and I would click continue. And because this is registered with Cloudflare, it would automatically follow through setting up the DNS settings and all the way through setup. Now, once that domain has been added, you can come back to the settings of the actual funnel, expand the domain picker box there, and you can assign that domain to the specific funnel. The next thing that you have to do is actually generate an XML sitemap for your newly created domain. And the way you're going to do that is from the domain section inside of high level, you're going to click the three dots and you're going to click XML sitemaps. From here, you're going to click proceed uh, and you're going to have an XML sitemap there that you can generate or add a new one and then just click generate so that this goes out to Google and um, the site gets kind of indexed. Now the next step is to open up that actual URL and make sure that you can see your form, you can see your client's logo there, and you can see the disclaimer. This is super important to have this disclaimer in here so the regulators can see this. Now they're going to require a screenshot that's publicly accessible onto a Google Drive. So what you want to do is take some sort of screen capture software or a screenshot of this and just take a screenshot of this entire uh, thing here. Once you've taken this screenshot that also includes the URL, it includes the logo, it includes the disclaimer, make sure that you go and you upload it and you save it onto a Google Drive folder. 
Now I typically take it a little bit further and I add a square outline over the message along with an arrow so it makes it easy for them to kind of look and point their attention at the disclaimer. So now that you've done that, it's time to actually start the verification process. What you want to do is come back to the phone number section and click on this triangle that says verification required. Do not click on trust center because trust center is only going to be for, for uh, local numbers. And if you start this process with a toll free number, it is going to fail. This is only for local numbers. The verification for toll free numbers has to happen and be initiated from this section right here. So make sure you click on verify and it's going to ask you for a bunch of business information. What you'll want to do here is put the legal business entity, their website, their first name, last name, email, and a cell phone number of your client if for whatever reason they need to get a hold of them. You can find all this information needs to match whatever the state has for that specific business. The next screen is basically going to ask for uh, address information. Again, you're going to get this from the state's website to make sure that you, the information you're providing here is only for verification of that business. So go ahead and plug that in here as well. Once you click continue, you're going to have a few options in here. What I typically choose is going to be 1000. That's These are the settings that I choose and I've registered, like I said, hundreds of businesses at this point doing this exact same. It doesn't mean that you can only send a thousand messages per month, but what we're trying to do here is just get through verification. After that, you can adjust things and change, send as much as you like or as little as you like. Uh, but this is for our purposes since we're doing local lead generation for customers. Um, this is kind of what the settings that we pick, all right? So use case, I always choose customer care. Under opt-in type, I typically always pick web form. Okay, under use case, I have a document in here that uh, you guys are more than welcome to, to, to copy. And basically, I know exactly what I'm gonna say, and I say this on every single one of the registrations. I just copy this, plug it in here, and then I go back to my A2P document, and I copy this exact same thing. I do not have links in here, I do not have phone numbers in here, basically, the only purpose of what we're trying to do right now is get through registration. I go back in here and I paste that in there. Now, there are going to be some adjustments in here. At this point, you're going to have to make some adjustments to this. You're going to plug in the name of your business owner in here and the name of their company. Once you do this, there's one more crucial step that's left, and this is going to be this section here. Now, they want a publicly accessible URL that they can see a screenshot of the actual registration form. And all that prep work that we did in the beginning is gonna show up right here. So I've uploaded the image for that registration onto a Google Drive folder. And what I wanna do is share it. But here's what you wanna do. You wanna click share and click share. You don't wanna copy that link because by default, Google has these links restricted. What you wanna do here is click restrict it and click anyone with the link. Now you can copy this link and it is public. What you want to do is open up a browser in incognito and verify that you can actually access that screenshot. If you can access that screenshot from an incognito window, that means that it's ready to go. Then you'll come back here to the registration form and you're gonna just paste that URL in there. Last thing is to agree to the terms of service and send for verification. Now doing this process here, has allowed us to verify hundreds of numbers without any issues. Uh, usually within 24 to 72 hours is when we're seeing these toll-free numbers get registered and we're ready to rock and roll after that. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any questions about this process, um, leave me a comment. I'm gonna leave some resources in the description of this video for you guys to go ahead and check out.